Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Warm welcome to those of you who um, survived my last video. I did see that some people unfollowed me, which... Hey, good for you. If you don't want to be here, I don't want you here either. Get on out! <laughs> but for those of you who stayed and are enjoying these videos, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I greatly appreciate you coming back. And again, we're going to be doing a face-to-face -face video here. Um, hopefully that you enjoy, hopefully you enjoy it because this is going to be another good one about the third and the first attitude and really how to empower yourself. That's what the entire point of all typology systems is, is to empower yourself. And you want to know how you empower yourself? You do it by realizing what you're doing and why you're doing it that's it that's the big secret that's what we all hide from ourselves to varying degrees what we're doing and why we're doing it so what's the answer write it in the comments if you think you know what it is because it's very very simple <laughs> The answer to all of this is you are doing it to protect yourself from dying, right? It all leads to death. It all leads to, I'm not going to survive if I don't do this. And, you know, some of you that know, excuse me, Enneagram are instantly like, that's the Enneagram. That's the defense of the ego. Yeah, you're right. That is one way that we can quantify it. But there's many other things happening that we also need to be aware of, one of them being attitudinal psyche, the third attitude and the first attitude, that bring us to that moment where we're defending ourselves and being crazy and then we trigger the instinct and you know a lot of shit goes wrong. But it comes from a trigger. There's got to be a trigger to begin with. What is that trigger? It's not Enneagram. Enneagram is how we deal with it once we're triggered. Because that trigger made us feel a certain way that we have to defend ourselves. So the trigger is the third attitude and sometimes the first attitude, but it's usually the third. So for those of you familiar with AP, you might know what the third attitude already is. But let me give you a better idea of how it operates and what it's about, right? So the first thing we know about the third attitude is that it's self-negative and it's others negative. So it's got that double negative connotation with it. It's very process oriented because it's a double negative. So not only do you have a self negative reaction to things to stimuli about that aspect, but you also have a reaction to outer stimuli about that aspect. So you got negative aspect out here, negative aspect in here. What's going on there? There's a communication happening between the self and others. That's the process orientation. That's why it's process. You're comparing the self and others. You're comparing inner and outer perceived stimuli regarding that aspect. Okay. So it's others negative. What does that mean? That means that it's vulnerable, right? When you look outside of yourself, it's something that gives you a bad feeling. Feeling. It's something that feels opposite to you, feels that you have to be wary about, that you have to pay close attention to what somebody's doing to you within that aspect. And then you're self-negative as well, so you have an insufficient idea of how to deal with it. You, you've adopted this idea that you're not enough, you're insufficient, you can't deal with it, you have to put in overtime if you do want to deal with that thing. And it's triggering. It's naturally triggering. And we all have a third aspect. We're just born with this natural way of reacting to the world. And that's what it is. It's reactions. So you have this third attitude. It's looming. And it's this thing that triggers you. Now, a lot of you, when I say that, you instantly know what I'm talking about. You know that there's a feeling that happens when certain things go wrong or when certain things get you moving or when you notice something that's off. 
you know it's gonna lead to a big show of feelings and you're gonna have to deal with that somehow but what is that well that's your third attitude and it's the reaction to stimuli and it's something that warns us it's a signal that we have to do something to deal with it now a lot of you feel it here in the chest it's the heart skipping a beat it's that sharp pain because you're not breathing properly it's a dizziness in the head it's a worried feeling it's thoughts recycling over and over or it might be felt in the palms right palms might get sweaty hot there's like a weird thing happening with your body that you can't explain and then a lot of you will feel it in the stomach and the organs and you will feel it like when you almost get in a car accident and your organs go zoop, they take a vacation to your like upper part of your body that's the feeling that's what it feels like when your third attitude is triggered now this can happen with the first attitude too it's not just the third because the first attitude is also others negative just like the third so it views outer stimuli as a threat or as just something negative something that needs to be discounted ignored or closely paid attention to either way it's just negative reaction to outside stimuli the strategy you use is your enneagram so we got these two things happening with us we got these things that trigger us right so now you as the watcher for those of you who aren't sure what your third attitude is is very very easy right take out a piece of paper if you're confused you're still like oh my god how does this work i've heard so many different answers none of it makes sense to me this is all contradicting my last video for that rant if you're one of these people get out a piece of paper i'm going to make this very simple for you to understand because it is you got a piece of paper Start thinking about all these feelings that I just told you about. Now, if you're an Enneagram 9, it's going to be very difficult for you because you are naturally somebody who throws that feeling away. Like, I don't want to feel that. So the strategy is to just not feel it and to dissociate. So for you Enneagram 9s, especially for you, this is uncomfortable, but you have to access it if you want to understand what's there in that third aspect, that third attitude. And... I want you to get it. Who doesn't want to be empowered? You're not going to be empowered by ignoring yourself. So, long rant, short, get out your piece of paper. Start thinking about what triggers you, what gives you that feeling, that automatic, uh-uh, the automatic no, that automatic something's wrong. What makes you want to ignore everything? What makes you want to react to everything? What makes you want to feel that you have to protect yourself in some way write it down start writing them all down throw them all on the piece of paper i don't even care if you took a wrong turn somewhere and now you're triggered and now you just want to like blow up and you just want to crash your car you want to do something stupid <laughs> like, i don't care whatever crazy thoughts come into your monkey brain when you're in those moments write it down on a piece of paper make a big old list when you're done with this list, observe the list. Look at it. Read it up and down like five times. What is the pattern? What's the overwhelming pattern there? What part of life does it have to deal with? Okay, and now what I'm asking you by saying that is what aspect is it dealing with? Did you write on there like, I hate when I feel stupid? I hate when I feel that I'm not right about things. I hate when people don't listen to me or they reject me because they think that I don't make sense. Are you anxious all the time? Is it the feelings in the body? What is it? What triggers you? Right? Now, if it's all that logical stuff, then you're 3L. If it's volitional stuff, if it's like, I don't know who I want to become, I get stressed when I have to think about my future, 
I get stressed and I feel that feeling when somebody comes up against me and makes me feel like I don't have a choice in the matter. I get stressed when I have to think about, you know, what my plans should be for feeling empowered or feeling worthy. That's volition. You probably have 3V. If you start worrying about your body and how you feel and what you should eat that day, whether you overate, if overeating triggers you, if thinking about how you should look, you're wanting to be hot, but you don't think that you're hot, you're wanting to be, I don't know, you want to go to the gym five days a week, but you can't do it because... You know, it makes you feel a certain way. You're worried that you're going to have heart failure. You're worried that you're going to, you know, lose too much weight. You're worried that you're going to gain weight. you worried about how you're going to feel afterwards. You know, write all that's, if you wrote all that down, that's 3F. <laughs> you're worried about your emotions. If you're worried about how you feel, if you're worried about people's reactions to you, if that's what gets you triggered. If what gets you triggered is when people ask you how you feel, when people want to know what's going on in your mind. If thinking that you might not have real feelings of your own, that's on your list. If the way that people respond to you and your relationships and what your relationships mean, if that's what makes you triggered, those are your three E. Now, with one caveat, if these things trigger you and you have a quick response to deal with them and you trust your response, and then you feel fine after you've done your thing, mm -mm, that's the first attitude. These are things that trigger you and always trigger you, and you don't know what to do about them, and when you do do things about them, it causes you more stress or you have to escape it. That's the third attitude. Right? And a lot of times the first attitude doesn't trigger people too. So chances are you're talking about your third attitude when you wrote that list out. So. This is your third attitude. So now what? Right now that we've identified what it is, now what do I do? Well, start thinking about how you deal with the fact that now you're triggered. Why does it trigger you? What, what do you believe now as a person you have to prove about yourself to make the triggered feeling go away? Self and as an example, since I'm the only one here talking to myself. All right, somebody rejected me because they think I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about. One of my triggers. One of my triggers, I'm putting it out in the world so everybody knows now. That leads me to the next thought. Why does that trigger me? What does it mean about me? What does it mean about the ego? The Rob Zeke. What, what does it say about me to the world? Well, if I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm weak. I'm weak. People are going to take advantage of me. People are going to destroy me. I'm not going to be able to feel alive. I'm not going to be able to feel empowered if I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to be eternally wrong. And then there's nothing that I can do about it. I won't be able to lift myself back up, right? That's the fear. That's the ego fear. <laughs> so now it's like, all right, well, now what do I have to do about it to deal with the fear that the trigger caused? Well, now I have to be loud and obnoxious and I have to be um, argumentative with my words and my emotions. I have to show people that I won't back down. <laughs> so see how this works? You know how the trigger just leads you down this path? And then what, all right? Then what? Now that I've now that I've been argumentative and loud and emotional and you know, I've proved that I'm this and that to to whatever. Now it's like, okay, now how do I make myself happy again? Because that experience is stressful to humans. It stresses us out. It's very stressful to be constantly trapped in your triggers. In your strategies now it's like okay now i want to feel alive again in the world i want to feel that i matter i want to feel that i have a say in other people's lives 
I want to feel the beautiful transcendent moments with people. And that's the real desire, right? And that is kind of your, what drives you instinctually to be happy. And that's the ultimate thing that we need. Everybody's is different, but goes down to a couple of similar things. So what do you do? You're probably asking now, what the hell am I supposed to do with this info? Okay, I know what triggers me now. I get it. I think I get it. And look, a lot of you ain't going to get it. <laughs> There's some people that are so caught up in just distracting themselves once they're triggered and they don't want to believe it. They don't want to see it because it's too demanding of the self to deal with they're not going to see it there's going to be a lot of people in that boat but that's okay it doesn't have to be you we can all escape it as long as you are able to self-reflect you can absolutely escape that and chances are if you clicked on this video you're somebody who can self-reflect so um, there's no reason to be doubtful in this moment but all right now you know you're triggered what do i do Okay, now you just think and feel. You accept that you have a negative reaction to that thing. It's what makes you human. It's okay to have that reaction to things. Move forward. All right, I had the negative reaction. Why did I have that negative reaction? What does it mean about me? What do I think it means about me? What would I normally do in that situation? How would I resolve that thing? Lay it out in your head, give it its attention that it needs because it does, honor it, and then move on. Crumple it up. Right? Write it down on your piece of paper about everything that triggers you. Write about how you would deal with all these triggers, how you would respond to people, how you would react, how it would cycle out and you would do it over and over again until you felt happy and fulfilled or something that fulfills you comes along. Play it out in your head, feel it. Feel the feeling, right? Feel the reactions and then zoop, throw that shit away. Just toss it. And move on. Because you can. Everything in life is a perception. It's all in how we think things are affecting us, how we feel that things are affecting us. Our perception of what's happening creates the response and creates our action. So if you've already felt it, if you already know what you do, and here's the thing, you are the expert of yourself. I am not a guru. I'm not this person that can give you the answers. And nobody online, nobody in your real life is. You are the expert of you. You know your patterns. You inherently know your patterns. So with that knowledge, since you're the expert of yourself, you know that you do this. <laughs> it's not a surprise. There's no reason you need to hang on to the feelings constantly. All right? Look, humans have used millions of different strategies to survive. And unless you are in need of basic survival in that moment, or what you need to feel happy, which is a different story, you're not going to die from not acting out this ego strategy and the behavioral strategy that helps you deal with your perception of things. The brain doesn't know any different. If you just play it all out in your head and feel the feelings and feel what would happen if you did the thing, then your brain is basically like, oh yeah, that already happened. So it's kind of like a trick that you can use to be wise. And plus, you're aware. You're self-aware of what happened to you. You're self-aware of what you do self-aware of your strategy of your triggers of all that so you move on you literally just move on and tell yourself 
well, you know what? This other thing actually makes me happy, so I'm going to do that. Right? Feeling empowered. Helping others. Reading a good book. Listening to inspiring music. Do people like? Finding the love of my life. Feeling desirable. Feeling authentically myself. You know, these are things that make people happy. Do that instead. You got your moment out of the way. You got your freak out out of the way. Now it's time to do what you're capable of and be happy and be wise. And then you can start to talk about it, which is what I'm sitting here doing now. Then you can start to laugh about it. It, it doesn't, it stops being vulnerable because you've already created a way to deal with it and to honor the emotions okay this isn't associating don't do that please god don't do that <laughs> don't just act like it it's not there and it doesn't exist it does exist you're a human you know that you're like this play it out quickly it, it starts to become like an easy habit where you're like okay yeah i feel this because of that and i would do this to feel better about it and that's it and then you don't actually do it. You don't screw your life up by constantly being reactive or dissociative. Both are bad. And then you move on, right? You have the wisdom, and then you can talk about it. You can teach other people. You can actually be present in your life and what's happening because you're not busy acting out all your ego strategies. And it becomes a beautiful thing. It's, you see the beauty in your life. You see your power. And you block out other people who notice this thing about you because they do. People 100% notice that you are vulnerable in these areas. They will study you. People that want to use you and take advantage of you will study you and find out your patterns. And then they'll use them against you and they'll take what you have and they'll, they'll get you to behave in the way that they want you to behave. Make, for whatever reason, there's a variety of reasons. They're all freaking evil unless they're trying to empower you. But people will do it if you don't do it for yourself. Right? That's what I want to do. That's why I'm here. That's why I want to empower you all. And I'm not just saying this as somebody who's like, yeah, listen to me. Again, I'm not the freaking guru here. I've gone through it. I've been the guinea pig. I've been the person who was attracted to crazy people in the most psychologically insane environments you could even ever think of. I put myself in it. I did the work. I've done the work. <laughs> I've been with. I've been through all sorts of crazy, unimaginable things that you just can't even wrap your brain around. I've gone delve deep, delve deep into the psyche of insanely toxic, narcissistic, psychopathic, sociopathic, embryonic, borderline, whatever you want to throw at me. I've dived into all the psyches and been close to people like this and paid the ultimate price. So I'm just bringing you personal... <laughs> personal experience with these things and these people that are out there okay and look the truth is always going to be the truth no matter what way you look at it no matter what way you perceive it it's always okay to recognize the truth and once you do recognize it you can create your own reality and you can snatch your own power up and do whatever you please with it again being empowered so i think i have babbled enough in this video i hope that you got something from this <laughs> um just keep in mind you you never have to play out your triggers you can always think and feel through them and choose to act in whatever way best serves you after the fact. So that's the golden rule. And I hope that this video illuminated it for you. Leave a comment if you got something out of this. Um, if you like this style of video, 
let me know that you like it. I love to get positive feedback <laughs> if possible. Um, and yeah, I'm going to make more of these videos. So this will be a little bit of a series, just a series of empowerment, I guess we can call it. And we'll get more into the nitty gritty next time. We'll go through each one of the attitudes kind of one by one and explain them out. And we can see each little pitfall because it gets very specific. There's so many different ways that humans can manipulate and act out their ego strategies and how other people can even manipulate you. So we want to go through them detail by detail eventually. But for this opening video... This is all we got and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.